Rock climbing, rafting, skiing, and hiking are just a few of the things that come to mind when one thinks of Durango. A place where widespread, healthy activities like these surely cultivate an entire community of not only physically fit people, but mentally healthy people. On paper, a small quiet community such as our own seems like the perfect place to live, somewhere one's mind can rest at ease from the blaring horns and smog layers that seem to bring unrest to our minds. Our nice little like-minded mountain town is surely perfect for combating this unrest we may have, but no matter how righteous and wholesome, like-mindedness excludes and shuns those who don't fit in. This exclusion can often push those who are not ready to the point of madness. Depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses have pushed many people to a point of no return. The time to begin finding solutions is now, but we should have started a long time ago. It's also a place where people kind of flock to who have um, like adventurous spirits, um, which I think just puts people at higher risk for you know trying different things and maybe making crazy choices. You know, I think just like anecdotally leaving the area, I feel like sometimes it feels really geographically isolated you know, from cities and things like that. Um, I can't talk about if that contributes to suicide, suicidality. Um, but you know that we are geographically isolated, you know, there's, there's mountains and desert all around us. Um, we're super isolated, so um, we don't have access to as many services as, you know, big cities do. Um, I guess this region is there's a lot of parody of like wealth, like we'll, we can have, and so the kids that come here have such different backgrounds, like you know from from anything you can imagine, and I think a lot of kids come here and the students here are their community or the students here are that positive people in their life, um, their crew teacher is their number one trusted adult over their mother, mother, father, aunts, uncles, grandparents, you know, and so I think this, I think I think they all. A lot of them, the students are that community for them. A lot of them, their parents are that community for them. Um, and a lot of them don't have that community. So I think it, it, it depends. So then the question was, do you think students here have access to like the same community? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times for the students that we, we deem like at risk, the, the their student, their peers can be that support system for them. When studying ways to solve mental health issues, a good place to start is with young people, particularly adolescents. By talking to these people about mental health issues early in life, we can set them on a trajectory for a mentally healthy life. It's impossible to mention high school without bringing up the common movie trope of not fitting in, of feeling insignificant, and covering all pieces of one's character, save for the best. This isn't just a movie trope, but often a reality in schools. Many people that have finished high school will look down upon these students, scolding them for their childish social structure, as they continue to live the same life within their work. Living in a place like Durango, one would have every motivation to cover up all but their best qualities. You know, I think, especially from us as a training standpoint, I think we've been doing a ton of more, like more programs. There are sources of strength that every, every school in the, in the district has um, rolled out this year. I know like Dolores and Cortez have been doing it for a couple of years. So I, I guess we're just kind of catching up on that point. Um, I think we need to talk about it more in schools. Um... If you think about the time a kid spends in their life as a teenager, most of your time is spent in schools, and that's where it needs to happen as a teenager. And then the signs of suicide screenings that we do two, twice a year. So I think a lot of it is, like, so I think we've been doing a lot of like reactive and reactionary programming that we've been done for a couple of years. But I think the sources of strength and more positive-based um, PBIS um, is really helping us be proactive. And so I think we're really getting more into proactive but because we have been kind of reactionary and reactive for the past couple of years. But building relationships with students aside from, you know, in a therapeutic setting, um, just getting to know them and getting to know their strengths. And um, we call it strength-based um, therapy where you start where they are. You know, I'm not gonna pull a student into my office and say, this is what I've heard, this is what I want to talk to you about, I'm going to pull them in and say, tell me about you, do you want to talk? In Japanese culture, there's a form of art known as kintsugi. At its base, kintsugi is simply the repair of a shattered or broken bowl or piece of pottery with a type of lacquer, often colored gold. While originally it was a simple method of repair and nothing more, people started to like the repaired bowls more than regular ones. 
Some people were even accused of breaking valuable pottery, just so that it could be adorned with gold-lined cracks and breaks. The idea behind this began to stem a philosophy. This philosophy stated that something that was broken was not gone, but simply should be repaired, that the cracks and lines born into a repaired piece of pottery were not a flaw, but a testament to the pottery's history. This broken bowl had a story, and another layer of character as compared to a new one. It um, needs to be improved, needs to be more available, um, needs to have more people talking about it, which is what you guys are doing. This is a fantastic medium and mode to have it be okay to talk about. And that wasn't present at all when my son committed suicide in um, 2015. Like I, I see my cousin or my uncle, every person that in these lessons I'm teaching, every person, I wouldn't say every person, the vast majority, when I said who's here been affected by, by someone dying by suicide and you know, a ton of hands go up in every class. And that right there is like, most people know someone that has taken their life. The period between ages like 12 and 18, they're, they're, I mean, you're going through so much emotionally, physically, um, socially. And so it's just a period of time where um, people, every single person who's ever been through that time has struggled with something at one point or another, in my opinion. High school is a period of struggle and strife and growth and you know trial and tribulation in general. All these people coming in to support each other. Um, when anything horrible happens in this community, and suicide is one of the most horrible things, the overwhelming support that I felt throughout the community from kids, parents, teachers. I think every single one of Sawyer's teachers was at his memorial, from preschool all the way through. Um, and that was wonderful. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, yeah, it's just an incredibly supportive community. And then what you guys are doing, and that now we are talking about it. Now we are finding ways to help prevent it in our society. Now we're finding ways to put it out there that we can talk about that suicide, your risk of suicide, that you feel like, I don't want to be here anymore. I feel like for Sawyer, part of it was just such an impulsive flash. Positive affiliations, like people you can lean on that yeah, recognizing positive and negative affiliations, like the source of strength to get that permeated throughout the whole school. That way we can really talk about strength-based instead of deficits or what we perceive deficits. One of the hardest obstacles we'll face in our lives is the acceptance of people we never thought we could face. We live as one community, one that should not be separated by social standards and broken by our insignificant differences. Living our lives for one another, creating openness and accepting people despite their shortcomings. Every human being on this planet has made a mistake, lied, or hurt someone at some point in their life. No one is exempted from the right to a loving community because struggles and mistakes aren't wrong, they're human.